What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. It's no secret that ASUS recently launched the ROG Ally X. And in this video, we're actually gonna be taking a look at a totally different operating system running on this unit. And of course, I'm a huge fan of the Steam Deck and especially the Steam Deck OLED with SteamOS installed. There's no doubt that that's definitely been the king of Linux handhelds recently, but I think we have a new contender here if you want to install Linux on your ROG Ally X. And in my opinion, it's definitely worth doing. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Baz iOS on the ROG Ally X, and I'll tell you right now, I mean, this is an awesome performer. We're getting amazing battery life, and the Baz I team has done a really good job with these updates specifically for the X. If you're not familiar with Baz iOS, basically what they've done is create a really nice operating system based on Fedora that kind of gives us all the features that the Steam Deck has. And that's one of the big reasons somebody would want to install this on the X to kind of get that console feel. Or if you wanted to kind of create a Steam Deck with a more powerful APU and a much larger battery. There's no doubt that the Bazite team will be releasing more optimizations specific for the ROG Ally X. There are a few little things that I saw here, like a little bit of a higher power draw than Windows when it comes down to it with those lower TDPs. But another thing to keep in mind is the ROG Ally X has been available to the public for four days at the time of making this video. So this is some really awesome progress. I've been doing quite a bit of testing with Bazai on the X and it seems like everything's working here. We've got full TDP control, iGPU control, system-wide FSR, RGB control, haptics are working, gyro. At the time of making this video, everything seems to be functioning like it should on this unit. And just to give you a better look, I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. I'll be using an Xbox controller to just kind of go through the operating system, give you a look at everything. Then we'll move into some game testing. So yeah, Bazai has been totally updated for the ROG Ally X, and my favorite part about this new update is total TDP, fan control, RGB control directly from within software. We don't have to install any other third-party software. Handheld daemon is pre-installed, ready to go, and all we need to do to access it is actually double-tap our Armory Crate button. We can set up a different hotkey if you want to, but as you can see from our TDP mode, silent, 13 watt, performance, 17 watt, Turbo 25, just like we have in Windows in Armory Crate with the ROG Ally X. Plus, we've got this custom. We can go down to 1 watt and all the way up to 30. Plus, we've got a TDP boost here. I've been leaving this off, but uh, you know, it will give us a little bit extra. So if you did set this to let's say 15 watts, it'll probably boost up to around 18 with that enabled for a short period of time. Again, I've just left this off. I was actually checking out battery life on this thing with Bazai installed, and it's really, really good. RGB control, we can turn it completely off. Solid, pulse, duality, rainbow, spiral. Controller emulation, I've got this set up as Xbox Elite. You can set it up as an Xbox DualSense or DualSense Edge. Basically, it's just going to trick Steam into thinking you have one of those controllers attached. Motion support is enabled right out of the box. We can disable the full touch screen until restart. And while we're in the handheld daemon menu, if we press Y, it'll bring us into the full settings. Again, TDP mode. You can change TDP on the fly by using the view button and Y. You can disable this. Custom fan curve across the board can be set up. Charge limit and energy management. So under manual mode, CPU power low, balanced high. You can really tweak and tune the power and performance of the ROG Ally X with Bazai installed now. Again, RGB, controller, we can set up some shortcuts here and just our full settings. But yeah, that TDP control, I mean, going from 1 all the way up to 30 is really great here. So yeah, I would definitely go through here, check out what they've got, but it definitely seems like a lot has been added here with handheld daemon on the ROG Ally X. Now, of course, along with that, we've still got access to that Steam Deck overlay here. Performance overlay, go all the way up with it. I'm going to leave it right here while we're taking a look at everything. Frame limit, obviously we've got that 120 hertz 1080p IPS display in the Ally X, so we're set at 120. We can disable the frame limit, allow tearing, half rate shading, TDP and manual GPU clock can't be changed right now from here. This is mainly for the Steam Deck itself, but we've also got system-wide FSR that we can use. And everything here has been working. Sound, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, built-in haptics on the ROG Ally, and even the gyroscope is working with Bazite right now. Head into my menu here, Settings, System, AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme, 
8 cores, 16 threads. RAM size on the Ally X is actually 24 gigs, but since we've got 8 gigs dedicated to VRAM, it's showing up as 16 for the system. That's totally fine. You can change this from the BIOS if you want to, but 8 gigs is more than enough for this little handheld. And just like with other systems running Bazite, we still got access to a desktop interface. Now I wanted to move into some gaming, and we're going to start off light here. I've got Shredder's Revenge, and the big reason is just to show you battery life here. Over on the left-hand side, we've got our performance overlay running. If you take a look right here, total battery draws around 10.6, 10.7 watts. Now it's saying around 7 hours of runtime, right there at our estimated runtime, but uh, we're not fully charged, we're at 95%. So with this battery, being an 80 watt battery fully charged, around 7.5 hours of runtime with this thing pulling 10.6 watts. But one thing I've noticed here, and I know it's early for Bazite on the Ally X, Windows is using a lot less power with the same exact settings. And I wanted to give you a look here. 5 watt TDP, total battery draw, 7.2, 7.3 watts. And it might not sound like a lot, but if we do the math here with a fully charged 80 watt battery pulling 7.3 watts, we're looking at around 10 and a half hours of runtime instead of seven and a half. And I completely understand that the Bazite team can kind of go through and we could probably see the same kind of battery draw using Bazite on this system. It's still a bit early, but I mean, seven and a half hours on this unit isn't bad at all for a handheld gaming device. Next up, we've got Elden Ring. I'm in turbo mode right now, 1080p, low settings, and you can see it dipping under 60. For the most part, it's really playable like this. It would have been nice to just hang right there. And if we threw a little more at this, uh, maybe even just a little more GPU, we could definitely get this to run at a constant 60. But this is one of those games that's always given me issues in Linux with these lower powered iGPUs. Either way, it is playable. And if we drop these settings down, let's say 900p, yeah, we could stick right there at 60 with it. Next on the list, we've got Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, 1080p medium settings with AMD's frame gen turned on from the settings. I'm at an 18 watt TDP, no TDP boost going on here. This game runs really well on the Ally X with Linux installed, even in Windows. Since Nixus added the uh, frame generation from the settings with this game and a lot of their others, I've actually gone back on the original ROG Ally and played through this game again just because that frame gen made it such a playable experience here. And usually I've got it locked down at 60 on the original Ally, but with some more power thrown at this CPU, we can actually run this at 120 hertz, which is pretty crazy for a handheld gaming device. I also wanted to show off Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1080p, medium settings, AMD's frame gen is on. We're getting well over 100 FPS, and I've got the TDP set at 20 with no TDP boost. So another really playable game here. Here's Skyrim Special Edition, and you might notice those black bars on the side. That's because Bethesda has this set up for the Steam Deck, which has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. Unfortunately, we can't change any of the settings. I'm not exactly sure what this is at. But I am in turbo mode right now, and every once in a while, I do notice it dip under 60. Kind of wish Bethesda would allow us to change these settings, you know, in that Steam Deck area there. Uh, same thing with Fallout 4. We're kind of going to be stuck with this until we can get a modification to allow us to change these graphic settings in this Linux area. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings. We're at a 17 watt TDP. And I will tell you, this is one of those games that does work better in Windows, but there are games that actually perform better over here in Linux. And we'll take a look at one of them at the end. It's still really playable like this, but I mean, we're seeing at least a 20 FPS boost, same exact settings over on Windows coming from Linux. So yeah, it does perform much better over there. Horizon Forbidden West. If you've ever tried this on lower end hardware, you know that this is just a really hard game to run, even with all of the optimizations and frame gen on from the settings, we still get those dips under 60. 900p low settings, FSR is set to balanced. Now, of course, we could take this down to 720p or even set FSR to performance, but personally, I don't think it's worth it. It really does degrade that quality quite a bit, even just going at 900p to FSR performance. It really doesn't look good like that.
And the final game I wanted to test was Cyberpunk 2077, just using the built-in benchmark. 1080p, low settings, FSR is set to balanced, we're in turbo mode on the Ally X. I mentioned earlier that there are some games that run better in Linux, and I think CD Projekt Red has done a great job getting everything to work really well with the Steam Deck, and all of that does transfer over to these other handhelds running Linux. For instance, at the end of this benchmark on the Ally X with Bazai installed, our average FPS was 71.60. I went and ran the same exact test on my other ROG Ally X with Windows, 1080p, low settings, FSR set to balance. Now I know it's not a huge FPS loss, but in Windows our average was 68. This is very consistent. I've run these benchmarks several times, and every time I go over to Linux with Cyberpunk it just seems to perform much better. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on updates from the Bazai team for the ROG Ally X, but you know, in the meantime, if you're interested in learning a little more about the operating system or maybe even picking up an ROG Ally X, I'll leave links for everything down below in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the X, either in Linux or Windows, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. And like always, thanks for watching.